today I'm going to show you how to make 10 different flavoured filled chocolates. You will need, for the outer chocolate shell, you will need chocolate. You can either use milk, dark or white, whichever one you prefer. And I have used 100 to 150 grams. It all depends on the size of your moulds. I've got two different sizes of moulds. The small ones are three and a half centimetres wide and the big ones are 5.2 centimetres wide. About 100 grams of chocolate will make either eight small ones or six big ones. Our 10 different fillings are mint creams, brandy creams, rum creams, orange creams, marshmallow, marzipan, Irish cream, cookies and cream, gingerbread and chilli fondants. I have put timestamps in the description below and I have put chapters on the video so if there's only one flavour that you want to make you can just go straight to that. Firstly I will show you how to melt the chocolate so then it tempers, uh, then I'll show you all the flavours and then afterwards I will show you some of the designs that I did um, should you wish to copy them. I'm releasing this just before Christmas so some of these are Christmassy themed but um, some of them are just everyday themed as well. So I recently released a video on how to make chocolate lollies where I talked about tempering chocolate. So I'm actually just going to insert the clip from then in here because I can't quite make it sound any better than I did then. So with melting chocolate, what you're trying to achieve is the crystal structure inside the chocolate. So the way that chocolate, as you buy it from the supermarket, it's a certain crystal structure inside um, that makes it hard and shiny and the way that we like chocolate. If you melt it um, and just melt it straight off high temperature, it breaks all those crystals down and then when it reforms its crystals inside, it reforms to the easiest way, which isn't the crystal structure we want. We, um, you know, we want it nice and neatly blocked together and the way that it will, it will do is kind of messy. Hence why if you just melt chocolate, it won't set properly so you can like pick it up and it melts in your hands and it doesn't become shiny so the three different ways of melting chocolate is one using um like melting it to a certain temperature using a marble board to cool it down this kind of forces the chocolate to go in that structure the second one is called seeding where you melt about 75 percent of your chocolate um to a certain temperature drop it down to a temperature add your chocolate add the seeded kind of 25 percent that you reserve to it and this basically says to the chocolate this is your crystal structure you want to go to and then i think you have to do a bit more after that i've never done it either of those um uh, melting of chocolates um i always like to do my cheat method via microwave and the concept behind this is we don't let it go over 30 degrees because if it goes over 30 degrees those crystal structures break down and it won't set properly it's not the best way of doing it so if you have a better way of doing it if you're more comfortable with like the better ways of melting chocolate by all means go for it i want to show you guys the easiest way of doing this the simplest way of doing this and the way of doing it without equipment and um, so then anybody can do it so what you're going to do is you're going to chop your chocolate as fine as you can Pop it in a microwavable bowl and then you're going to put that in the microwave for 30 seconds initially. Once 30 seconds is up, take it out of the microwave, give it a stir. It won't really be melted, but make sure you stir it. This is going to release some of that heat, which then makes sure that we don't go over that 30 degrees. And then 10 second blasts of time in the, in the microwave. Stir after every 10 seconds. Once that chocolate has hit halfway melted, so it's, it's, you know, it's nicely melting and you've got chunks inside, that's where we're going to stop microwaving it. And at that point, you're going to stir, 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 stir. To stir it, that's going to help break down that chocolate. It's going to melt it and it's going to help keep it under that 30 degrees. And then once it's all nicely stirred and nicely melted, then if you are using a mould that is a hard plastic, you will want to grease this first with a little bit of vegetable oil. If it's a flexible silicon mould, then you don't need to grease it because it can easily pop out. But if it's a hard plastic, then you'll definitely want to grease it. Then having tempered 60 grams of our chocolate, you simply want to spoon the mixture into each of your mould holes. 
and then just using the spoon just spread that up the sides of the mould. You want a nice even layer throughout ideally and just keep spreading it around the mould until it is all covered. Once it's covered then pop this in the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes just to let it harden and then you will probably want to go back over it with maybe a second layer of melted chocolate um, just to cover up any holes within the chocolate. Once you're happy with the thickness and with the coverage of your shells then it's time to fill them. So firstly are mint creams. You will need 100 grams of fondant icing, one teaspoon of hot water and one to two teaspoons of mint extract depending on how strong you like your mint flavouring. I like just a hint so I only used one teaspoon but if you quite like a stronger mint flavouring then add two. Firstly you want to grate your fondant into a bowl. Then add your hot water and mix it with your spoon until it becomes sticky. Then add the mint extract and again mix really well until it's all well combined and it should be quite sticky and quite a thick mixture. Then simply spoon into your chocolate shells and um, trying to smooth out as much as you can do at the top. And then having tempered the 40 grams of chocolate that we reserved from earlier, you just want to spread that over the top, just covering the bottoms of the chocolate. Once covered, pop this in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes just to let it harden. Then for our brandy creams, you will need 100 grams of fondant icing, one teaspoon of hot water and two teaspoons of brandy. Firstly, grate your fondant into a bowl Then add your hot water and stir until it's nice and sticky. Then add in your brandy and stir until it's really well combined and really well distributed. Then spoon the mixture into your chocolate shells. And then having tempered the 40% of our chocolate that we left, you just want to cover the tops of these, pop in the fridge for about 20 minutes uh, to allow them to cool. Then for the rum creams, you will need 100 grams of fondant icing, one teaspoon of hot water and two teaspoons of rum. Firstly, in a bowl, grate your fondant and then add your hot water and mix until it's well combined and sticky. Then add your rum and mix really well. And then spoon this into your chocolate shells. And once the chocolates are full, then you want to temper the 40% of the chocolate we popped to one side. And then just use this to cover the tops of the chocolates. Once covered, pop this in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes just to let it harden. Then our orange creams. You will need 100 grams of fondant icing, one teaspoon of hot water and one orange. Firstly, grate your fondant icing into a bowl. Then add your hot water and mix until it's well combined and sticky. Then grate the zest of your orange into your fondant and then juice your orange so then you've got two teaspoons of orange juice and then pop those into your fondant and mix until it's really well combined. Then simply spoon this into your chocolate shells Then having tempered our 40 grams of chocolate, just simply pop these over the bottoms of the chocolates to cover them up. Pop in the fridge for 20 minutes to allow to cool. 
Then for the marshmallows, you will need 100 grams of marshmallows and two teaspoons of water. I would recommend doing this in halves, so only doing three of your chocolates at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 50 grams of our marshmallows in a bowl with one teaspoon of water. And then we're going to pop the marshmallows in the microwave for 30 seconds. This is why I only suggest doing half at a time because any more than that and it will go all over the place and make a mess of your microwave. Then you simply want to mix the marshmallows and then you want to spoon these into the chocolate shells. It is very, 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 very sticky. I would suggest putting a bit of vegetable oils on your hands to try and stop it sticking as much. It will still stick and it will be an absolute nightmare, but it tastes great. And then for these, I decided to do something slightly different and I tempered some of the leftover chocolate, popped it around the sides of the cases and then popped another case on top. So then it was a big marshmallow ball. But if you want to temper the chocolate and just um, put that over the bottom of the chocolate, so then you've only got half of a shell or a smaller chocolate, then by all means, Then for our marzipan chocolates, you will need 100 grams of marzipan. All you need to do is just fill up your chocolate moulds with the marzipan. Sounds simple, but it tastes great. <laughs> and then having tempered the chocolate, just spread this over the bottoms of your chocolate just to seal it in. Pop it in the fridge for 20 minutes to allow it to set. Then for our Irish cream. You will need 100 grams of fondant icing, one teaspoon of hot water, and two to three teaspoons of an Irish cream. It depends on how strong you want it to how many teaspoons you put in. Um, I put in two, but if you want it a bit stronger, you can put in three. Grate your fondant icing into a bowl. And then add your hot water and mix really well until it's nice and sticky. Then add your Irish cream and mix really well until it's well combined. Then simply spoon these into your chocolate shells. Uh, temper the 40 grams of chocolate that we have left over and then use this to cover the bottoms of the chocolates so then they're all sealed in. Pop this in the fridge for 20 minutes to allow it to set. Then our cookies and cream. You will need 100 grams of fondant icing, one teaspoon of hot water, two teaspoons of cream, and 30 grams of cookies. Firstly, you want to crush or break up your cookies so they're in little pieces. Then grate your fondant icing into a bowl. Add your hot water and mix it until it's nice and sticky. Then add your cream and mix really well. And then finally add your crushed cookies and mix until they're well distributed. Then simply spoon these into your chocolate shells. Then temper the 40 grams of chocolate that we had left over and simply spoon this to the bottom of the chocolates, uh, spreading it out so then it covers the bottoms. Then pop in the fridge for about 20 minutes to allow this to cool.
and then for our gingerbread you will need 100 grams of fondant icing one tablespoon of hot water two teaspoons of ground ginger and one teaspoon of ground cinnamon grate your fondant into a bowl then add your hot water and mix it should be a wet sticky mixture once it's all mixed in then add your ginger and your cinnamon and mix until well combined and evenly distributed throughout then simply add this to the chocolate shells then having melted the 40 grams of chocolate that we reserved then simply put this over the bottom and um, spreading out so then it's evenly coated and then pop that in the fridge for about 20 minutes just to let that chocolate set and for our final filling we have chili fondants you will need 100 grams of fondant icing one tablespoon of hot water and a half a teaspoon of crushed chilies firstly grate your fondant into a bowl then add your hot water and mix until it's really nice and sticky then add in your crushed chilies I find that half a teaspoon of crushed chilies is just the right amount that it's not spicy but it need, leaves a nice heat on the back of the throat if you if you want it a bit spicier by all means you can put in more then temper the 40 grams of chocolate that you pop to one side then simply put this over the bottoms of the chocolates and just seal the cream in then pop this in the fridge for 20 minutes to allow it to cool then to remove the chocolates from your moulds if you have a hard plastic mould while the mould is still cold you want to basically hit it against a work surface to knock the chocolates out so it should be that the chocolates have cooled down that they've shrunk slightly so they should be easier to get out of the moulds and if you have a silicone mould you can just pop those out Now I will show you some decorating techniques that I used. So firstly, a very simple decoration is to melt a little bit of chocolate. Um, and then for the cookies and cream, I just um, added a bit of a crushed up cookie to the top. So just a little bit of chocolate on top and then add the cookie and that will help it stick to the chocolate. If it's a festive chocolate you're after, then you could always make it look like a little Christmas pudding. So a little bit of white chocolate melted on top of a milk chocolate chocolate. And then with a little bit of green fondant, if you just take a little bit, roll it into a ball and then squish it down and then pinch the ends, it looks like a little leaf. This is a nice way of making a little leaf that doesn't require like a mould or a cutter or anything. and then a little bit of red fondant rolled up to make it look like berries on top. If you do have some fondant moulds, um, like I do, then you can just make little fondant decorations for the top, which you stick with um, chocolate. Something as simple as melting chocolate and then sticking either silver edible balls to the top or sprinkles or anything like edible like that you can stick to the top. Another one was that I made little bows out of fondant icing. Um, the way to do this, roll out your fondant icing, cut some long thin strips, um, cut them quite long um, fold into the middle to meet themselves so then they look like little bows and um, if you use a little bit of water to stick the fondant down um, and then taking a smaller rectangle and folding it over that fold so then it looks just like a little bow
and then just stick that to the top of your chocolate with a bit of melted chocolate. Um, another simple design I did was I just melted some white chocolate, put it on a milk chocolate chocolate, um, big circle, little circle at the top to make it look like a snowman, and then to smooth out the chocolate, just take a toothpick and just circle it. It'll take out any of the peaks um, and then it'll make it a nice circle so you can control where you want that chocolate to be. very simple one is to just drizzle the chocolate over the top um if you do i would suggest not not trying to drizzle to start with over a chocolate because it kind of falls in a clump as you can see um so if you clump it to one side and then drizzle it over the other chocolates and then for the chelly ones i decided i wanted pink chocolate on top if you do want to color your chocolate you need to use um, a non-water based coloring so the coloring i use is actually for fondant icing but if you just check the ingredients make sure it doesn't say water aqua anything like that if it's water based it will curdle your chocolate and it won't it won't look very nice it'll still taste fine but it won't look very nice so just make sure like i say don't use water based one and then I just sprinkle some chilli flakes on the top. Again, it's a nice way to remind me what's in the chocolate. And then finally, using little cutters, you can cut out shapes and stick them to the top of the chocolates with melted chocolate. So in this instance, I just did little stars. But if you wanted, if you've got slightly bigger cookie cutters, you could always do them slightly bigger and just stick them with a bit of chocolate. And there you have it. That is 10 different filled chocolates.